and faced a daunting task in 1994. The newly established body had less than four months to organize and implement the country's first fully inclusive democratic elections. The stakes were high. A successful vote would signal a new beginning for the nation at war with itself. Failure could have meant civil war here in South Africa. Now, the individual who was at the helm of the IEC at the time of the 1994 elections joins us now in studio. And it's my great pleasure to welcome Judge uh, Johan Krichler, the former IEC chairperson. Good to have you, Judge. Thank you very much for being with us here on the program. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. One of the articles that we, uh, we came across, you quoted as saying you fell into the job of the IEC chairman by default and mistake. What happened there? I was on holiday at the seaside and uh, I wasn't listening all that well on the phone when Minister Scutter, who was then the Home Affairs Minister, phoned me. I thought he was offering me the job on the electoral court. I said, yes, of course. I only found out a couple of days later when I was flying to Cape Town to go to the first preliminary meeting that I'd accepted an entirely different and very much <laughs> bigger job. And a massive task. Oh, we didn't realize at that stage how big the job was. I think if we had realized, we would have run away. It was in our ignorance that we decided way at the beginning in first week of January, our very first meeting, the Commission said this election is going to take place on the 27th of April, come hell or high water. Yeah. And I think that that was uh, our saving grace in the end. Yeah. We never retreated from that. Yeah. You know, we, we living in this day and age, you know, we look at the news events of our time, whether, we're, whether it be the passing of Madiba, which I think is, is a massive news, was a massive news event. We've got this Oscar Pistorius case that's taking place. But when we go back to 1994, to that first democratic election, the world was truly watching. I mean, I don't think, it didn't matter which corner of the globe, South Africa was the center of the universe at that stage. So nothing could go wrong. Well, everybody was expecting a disaster. Yeah. Everybody was expecting bloodshed the racial conflagration to end them all, uh, the negotiations and the settled peace was a surprise. And then the question was, could South Africa get over this hurdle of these very, very difficult elections? And the world was watching. I think many of the media were were expecting very, very serious violence. And there was serious violence. Yeah. There was bloodshed in many parts of the country, bombs going off, people being killed. Uh, it, but when we, by the time we got to the election, everything went peacefully on all of the days of the election, all of the days of the count, and all of the days thereafter, up until and including the glorious day when Madiba was inaugurated mm. at the Union buildings. Yeah. Uh, the people of South Africa had decided they were tired of fighting. They wanted to go into the new South Africa. And so the exercise worked. Let's talk about the logistics behind this, because, oh. you know, when you, when you look at something like this, you're going, you, we had an electoral system that was for this portion of the South African population. And then suddenly in 1994, it was that portion, you know, that's how much it increased. Oh, yeah. Voting stations, um, equipment in place, the personnel, the security, you name it. How did you handle this? Well, it, it, it's not only the numbers. Very large parts of the country were very poorly served, and some of them are still fairly poorly served in terms of infrastructure, uh, communications, getting there by road, getting there by telephone, getting there by radio. Yeah. Uh, no electricity, no communicability by, by ordinary means. You needed satellite communication. We had no cell phones in those days. People have forgotten that. Yeah. Uh, logistically, extremely difficult. The major initial difficulty was that we didn't know where the people were. We had no voters role. Ordinarily, an electoral administrator knows very, very accurately where the voters are, where you've got to p provide the voting po points. Uh, we had n none of that. Uh, and even the latest census was mistrusted by the liberation movements. Mm. So we didn't even know what the total population was. 
we didn't have standard ID documents. Many people had fled the country without ID and you couldn't exclude them from the vote. So we had to issue urgently 3.7 million voters' cards, uh, special voting cards. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, logistically, it was very tricky. What was the period you had to work in all of this? Uh, just under four months. Just under four months. We had to have the election before by the 27th of April. Gotcha. And we got, had our first meeting uh, in the first week of January. And the, at that stage, many of us introduced ourselves to one another. We'd never met before. We didn't know one another. None of the South African commissioners had electoral administration experience. Yeah. We were inspired amateurs. Mm. Um, Judge, I'm going to ask you to stay with us for a little bit. I'm going to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll just talk about some of the other logistical nightmares, and then I want to get your views on, on the IEC as it stands right now in the electoral system in South Africa. Uh, I'm here at your disposal. You take your breaks, you ask your questions. <laughs> That's why the judge pulled this one off in 1994. <laughs> well, I must say, we go to take the break, and now you see her, now you don't. She's right here back next to me. I must say, it was a pretty inspiring interview. I spoke to the judge earlier as well, Leanne. And when you listen to what the judge has to say yeah. and about how 94 was put together, it's quite amazing that we went through the transition. And it looked flawless because I don't know whether because it was the hype about actually South Africa eventually getting to vote or South Africans were like, you know what, we have to do this. We have to do this right. Yeah. It's our first time at it. In, democrat, in democratic South Africa, so let's get it right. And We've it got to get it right. It was amazing, but he was just such a lovely guy to talk oh, to. Oh, no, yes, yes. He is, he is so awesome to talk to, and I have to tell you, I mean, just, just in terms of the logistical nightmare of pulling something like that off, mm. uh, you heard, four months they had to do this, and the population that, you know, nobody had ID documents, mm. nobody had, well, not nobody, but yeah, yeah. the majority of the population didn't because have of, any of this. Because they never voted. Before. Exactly. So this was, this was something he fell into, and they managed to pull it off, and uh, the interview just gets even more and more exciting and I know we're going to be uh, showing that part to you including the part where you know when you go to the elections now you go to the IC center yeah. and you get uh, you get that little mark on your thumb are we still getting those this yeah year? Getting absolutely you'll get that so but the, uh, the the thing was in 1994 there used to be another one but it used to be on this finger and it and it was under a um, an ultraviolet light oh, that you could yeah. see it so what actually happened was they ran out of ink at some of the voting stations so they were just putting water on people's <laughs> hands just to say all right you voted move on. Um, there wasn't actually ink left and they couldn't get there. There were no cell phones. There was not. But anyway, the interview does continue with the judge and, and you'll be able to hear all of these stories. Let's take a break here.